Grace Life family, those of you that are watching online today by Facebook, YouTube, however we view. Yeah. We're so glad to see you. We are. We're always so glad that we have the opportunity to do these Wednesday nights. And we know a number of you have commented on yes. how much they've been helpful and how much they've just been stirring up that faith. And that's what we want. And it's definitely not any credit to us. It's no. definitely all credit and glory goes to God because he's the one that does these miracles. And we're getting excited and stirred up we ourselves are. just by going through these. Well, and even not just miracles, but the gifts of the Spirit, Cameron. Yes. You know, there's healings, there's the gift of faith, there's prophecy, there's word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits. And I think in all of the uh, miracles that we've looked at so far, we can see at least one of those gifts of the Spirit in operation. And so, you know, just being stirred up in these things, we want to remind you tonight, do not let this teaching and talking about miracles become mundane to you. Yeah, and I think that's uh, something that happens so often in life. And I mean, we talked about it a couple weeks ago with the idea of there are different signs you see on your way to work and you stop seeing them mm -hmm. after a while. And in science, it's called a reticular activator. They're literally the things you see so often that you stop seeing them because right. your mind doesn't need to process them anymore. But we don't want that to happen right. with this. Right. The miracles, what we believe for, not just individually, but corporately, Cameron, we've got a corporate faith that is building at Grace Life Church. And whether you're here in the actual, you know, the service attending here, or you're watching on Facebook on Sunday mornings, on the Wednesday night teachings, there is a spirit of faith that's growing Absolutely. for the miracles to happen. Yeah, and we keep saying this is going to be a year marked by miracles, but we don't want that expression just to go to the wayside. Like, no. I know we, there are a number of things here at church, for example, that we say every week. One is Jesus is our message and yes. people are our heart. Mm -hmm. We do our tithe declaration every single Sunday, and we keep saying every Sunday that this is going to be a year marked by miracles. We don't say it so it becomes one of those, like, routine things that you're just saying and not believing. Mm -hmm, right. We say it because that when we speak, we're proclaiming something. Yes. We're putting words to action. We're putting words to our belief. And we want you guys to be believing that this is a year that is going to be marked by miracles yes. because we want you guys participating in that. Yes. And you brought up a really good point about the words that we speak. You know, we're going to talk about faith tonight. We're going to depart a little bit from the book and talk about faith because one of the things that Jesus said in every one of the miracles was faith was required. Mm -hmm. And it's not faith required like, oh, I attend a church that teaches faith. It's faith is required from the person who is expectant to receive something. Theme. Absolutely. And there is that exchange of faith that's required. And I mean, we see that certain people that come before Jesus, and oftentimes they're not Jewish people in the miracles, mm -hmm. they're the Roman citizens. And one of my favorite is of the woman that comes up to Jesus and is asking him, like, son of David, have mercy on right. me. And he tells her, like, I'm to call to the Jews, right. not to the uh, Gentiles. So what do you want from me? And She's like, does not even a dog receive mm -hmm. scraps from its mm -hmm. master's table? And he marvels at right. her faith. And right. there is something that is required. There is a faith that we give and God right. responds to it. And in that particular miracle that you're talking about, um, the, the Bible says that she fell at his feet and worshiped him. And we know that the language of faith is worship. our words. It's worship. It's something that has to come out of our mouth. Faith yeah. is just not um, participating in something. It's saying something. Do you remember yeah. the miracle we talked about uh, where Jesus healed the woman with issue of blood? Yeah. It says, she said to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Yeah. And I think one of the things is that when we worship, our words are in action, and along with that, when we worship, it dethrones any idol oh, right. in our heart or in our mind, because as soon as we start giving worship, we exalt God above everything else, and we yes. take down any idol in his place. That's so good, Cam, and, and when we're worshiping, um, our, we magnify the greatness mm -hmm. of who he is instead of the magnitude of what we're facing, possibly in our body, yeah. in our finances, in our family. It's so easy to let those things to even become larger than they really are. Yeah. And the Bible says in the Old Testament that they were speaking about God, that these matters, that the things that we're concerned about 
are simple matters to him. Yeah. They're not hard to him. And faith is never intended to be hard. No, and I think oftentimes we have that expression that's kind of become cliche in some Christian circles of don't tell uh, God how big your storm is. Mm -hmm. Tell your storm how, how big, big your God, God. is. Yes. And oftentimes people are like, oh, that's a cute cliche. But no, there's a lot of truth in it. And there's a reason that cliche things have become cliche and said so much is because there is truth in them. Yes. And that's one of those things that, we shouldn't be focused on telling God of all our circumstances and what we're worried about. Yes, bring the things you're worried to about him and tell him about them. But also, like in Philippians 4, it talks about bring these things to him, but then thank him for everything he's done. Because at yes. that moment, like you said, we are magnifying him, not magnifying the storm, right. not magnifying the works of the enemy or anything that's like going against us. We're not trying to put them in a place of authority, but instead... We put God in his place of yes. authority and worship him. And so we just want to remind you tonight about faith. Faith for miracles, faith for whatever situation you are up against. There's the faith of God. There's the faith on the inside of us. There's the corporate faith. We are joining our faith with you. That's why we're teaching. And we want you to join your faith with us so that we've got this Grace Life Church thing going on. It's like, yeah. it's like a vortex that we can start. And I believe we have started it. Absolutely. And the more we talk about it, the more we give praise for it and worship him and magnify what he does, that vortex is going to spin closer yeah. and closer. You know, you know when you see a funnel, mm -hmm. the water moves faster as it gets yep. towards the bottom. Yeah, and it starts we off slow, <laughs> yes. and you just kind of make those revolutions, and then finally all of a sudden it starts feeling like yes. it's speeding up. Yes, and that's what we want to happen here. And like you said, not just a cliche. Oh, that was a good slogan for yeah. that year. Like I remember, um, you know, I was born in 1960, so I remember at 12 years old in 1973, uh, the, the big theme for the year, I think it was established by Billy Graham Ministry, is Key 73, the key to everything is Jesus, Key 73. Well, I think back about that time, and eh, that's all I remember is the slogan. Yeah. I don't remember any particular things that happened. We don't want that to be just a slogan for Grace Life Church. No. We want to mark these things. You know, the Israelites, the Lord told them to build altars. memorials. Yeah, to build these altars so that when they came back to them, they would remember what God had done yes. there. And I think it's important that we do make these markers. And we talked about it, this being a year marked by miracles, mm -hmm. that we will have things to signify and remember. This is what God did in yes. the year 2021. And there's so much power in marking and being in corporate belief. I mean, in the Old Testament, we have the verse, how can one put a thousand to flight and two put 10,000 mm -hmm. to flight unless their rock had sold them and the Lord had surrendered them? shows us that with one person, you can go after a thousand, oh, that's two, so good. and chase 10,000. And as we gather in a corporate like bond under one belief, under the faith in God, we start seeing miracles move mm -hmm. even more. Yes, we do. And it feels like, just as you were saying that, that it would be a really good time to just stop and consecrate ourselves as a church family, as the body of Christ to this corporate yeah. bonding together. If one can put a thousand, what can two do? But there's way more than two of us. And we are on the foundation, the rock of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So right now we consecrate ourselves yes, to, this, to this joining together of our corporate faith. And maybe it's for myself, but more importantly, it's for the whole. More yes, importantly, Lord. it's for the other one, the one that maybe doesn't even, can't even muster it up themselves. Yes, but Lord. we corporately can do this together with them or for them. So we yes. consecrate to this very assignment that you've given to us for this year, 2021, at Grace Life Church. Amen. And I think it, just even as you were praying, I thought about the disciples, how when Jesus sent them out, he sent them out in twos. Mm -hmm. When you see Paul go out, he always has a companion right. with him. Because there's strength in the gathering. There's strength in having a brother or sister side by side in the faith with you going yes. into any circumstance. Because it's easy for when you're going by yourself to start doubting yourself. But when you have another person with you, you all of a sudden start getting encouraged and you start building each other up and being able to be like, remember what God did remember, here. Yes. Remember, and that's sometimes... Our friends are the ones that are marking our memorials for us. They're yes. the ones saying, hey, don't you remember when? And you're like, yeah, yeah, I remember. And, like, and what about the time? And you're like, yeah, yeah, okay. And they're like, no, and what about the time? And you're like, 
You're right. God's got me. Yes. Someone did that for me just the other day for the year 2020 because we have a tendency to look at it as a year of what was taken away Mm -hmm. instead of what was given to us. And I think that the spiritual depth, the community, uh, the appreciation for community, the miracles that we saw happen. And, you know, speaking of miracles and uh, any particular need in your life, right now would be a really good time for you to... um, to post to us right now, or if you want to send us a private message some way, let us know how we can be believing with you, because this isn't just teaching. This is to see results. This is to raise your expectation, your hope in the Word of God and the promises of God. So take a minute and shoot us a message. Yeah. We'll pray for you. We want to be part of their life. And like you said, and I think it's a good point that a lot of times we forget when we're in church that it is never just teaching when we're in church. It's never just, ah, let's get more knowledgeable. There's a reason that we go to school and learn things. There's a reason you go to college or vocational Mm. school to learn something. It's so that someday you put those skills into action. Right. And we don't want to learn about faith just to be like, ah, I'm more knowledgeable on the subject. Isn't that great? (laughs) No, there is a purpose for faith. There is a purpose for what God wrote in his word and had people write out. It's so that we can take action. Yes. And be sure of this one thing. Your faith will be tested. If, If we didn't need faith, why would we just be going on to heaven? Faith is required when the test of life comes. And the book of James says, be sure that you will be tested in many different ways. But your faith is what's going to make you strong. The perseverance, it will make you a mature and complete person. In other words, also, it will make us a mature and complete church. Absolutely. And we even read in uh, one of the weeks prior when the, uh, and I think it was possibly last week, um, maybe two weeks ago, I can't remember, Uh, but it was when the disciples, like Jesus, they came to Jesus with the boy, and they're like, well, why couldn't we do it? There are going to be times where our faith may not make it, and a lot of times people get discouraged and want to quit there, but I think what the disciples did was great. They asked Jesus, what did we do wrong? Yes. And like Pastor Cindy just said, when we are moving in our faith, it is a great opportunity to learn and to grow, and if you pray for someone and something doesn't happen, don't get discouraged. One, the miracle might not happen immediately right then, but it might happen later that night. And I've heard plenty of stories like that where they were laying in their bed and then all of a sudden, like something grew back or the healing happened. So it can happen later. Or it's a perfect opportunity for us to be stop and be like, Lord, what should I have done? I because a lot of times, and mm. I know when I was little, like I would pray for people and just try and copy what I saw other preachers right. doing. And God in his grace and mercy, knowing that I was just a little kid, honored those prayers and I got to pray for people and they were healed. But now that I'm older, I yeah. wouldn't just try and like copy what someone else did because God wants me to work in the way that he wants right. me to work. Right, right. And, you know, a lot of times people will come along and tell you, you should where faith is required, mm-hmm. you know, well, you should believe God for this. You should do that. And they'll talk to you about faith and the you shoulds. Well, what does Jesus say that you should do? I have actually had people say to me, you should believe for this. And I'll say, you know what? My faith is extended already. I don't think I have room for that also yeah. to give it the attention and the words and the assignments that it needs to yeah. produce fruit. So we need to be honest too. And don't let what someone else does influence what you feel like the Lord is telling you to do. Like say if somebody's sick and they need a surgery, somebody might say, well, why don't you just believe God? Hey, I just want to tell that other person, why don't you just be quiet and let this person hear from God themselves? Maybe God wants them to have surgery. Maybe that's where their faith is. Maybe that's the path for them. Yeah, and that's a great point. Some people might have the faith to believe for supernatural healing in that moment. Mm -hmm. Some may have the faith to believe that that God is going to work through those right. doctors and do a great job. And I think so oftentimes we can get overexcited sometimes and extend our faith past what we're actually yes. realistically ready for. And then we're discouraged and we're not building faith. We're building right. our doubt because we're like, well, I have the faith for you this. Did you really? Mm. If you're being honest, because there have been many times where I'm like, I have faith that God's going to do this, this, and this. And like you said, I'm just making a long list. Yeah. And it's like my faith, like, are you sure, God, you got the Yeah, God, God, you got this, you got this right? You got the And it's like, I'm more like trying to convince myself as yes. I'm saying it than I'm trying to convince God. And yes. so there's no point in overextending your faith no. as it were. Build up faith in what you believe God can do. And when he comes through, just praise him for that and your faith will build. 
there's even peer pressure in faith, you know? Yes, there is. You should believe. You should believe. I'm going to believe how the Lord convicts me of the things that he puts in my heart. And let me say this, too, about different types of healings and miracles. One is not greater than the other. If someone gets instantly healed and another person uh, has surgery and they recover completely, the end result is the same. Yes. One is not greater than the other. So let's just stop the nonsense and just put our trust in God and ask him, Lord, is this something you want me to believe? Is this something you want me to do? Because if he connects to it, you know you're going to have success. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things also is I had a friend that uh, wanted to pray in tongues. And so they... <laughs> Were they went up to a uh, a like uh, prayer line, and the person was like, "I'm going to lay hands on you, and you're going to pray in tongues," and they didn't, and they felt terrible. And the person's like, "Well, maybe you just didn't receive correctly. Maybe you need to like reevaluate like your salvation, pretty much." And they went away very hurt. And they ended up talking to me about it, saying, "No, I believe in praying in tongues. That I do pray yeah. in tongues." And so I talked with them at length and prayed with them, and they didn't pray in tongues at that moment. And I'm like, "Hey, I still believe at some point you are going to." Fast forward a year and a half later, they're like, we're talking in a conversation, and they casually mention it. And I'm like, wait, what? You were praying in tongues? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, when did this happen? And they're like, well, <laughs> I was talking to one of my friends, and they just explained it, and I realized, like, they were expecting God to do it in a completely different way than, right. like, they were expecting almost God to possess them and speak through them. And they're like, and then they just kind of told me that, yeah, just take faith and start speaking, and it'll come. And he's like, and it did. And I'm like, didn't I explain that? And he's like, yeah, probably not well enough. And I'm like, oh, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> or maybe their understanding yeah. just grew. Yeah, and things change over time. Our right. faith, the point of that story is our faith builds over time. Yes. You may not get the answer to your prayer right now. Maybe you are, like, hoping to be able to pray in tongues because you've heard other people pray in tongues, or you want to be a part of that gift, and you're like, well, I just prayed for it. It didn't happen. Maybe it's just not right now. That gift is something that God offers to people, and it might take some time. Like right. you said, your understanding grows. You grow in the spirit. You mm -hmm. grow in faith, and you're able to take hold of it then. Right. And one of the things I've learned in my life of faith is I'm not, in, in most situations, I'm not the only player in this. Mm -hmm. uh, my life touches many people, and many people touch my life. And so in some of the situations where I'm believing God for a change, it might mean that someone else needs to enter the picture that I don't even know yet. Mm -hmm. Or someone else needs to adjust their behavior before I can slip into this place. Or, you know, there's many things. Yeah. Or like a healing. Maybe it's not even just that your body needs to be healed. Maybe you need to change your diet. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things that, you know, I, I'm thinking about the scripture that says, through faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. Yeah. And it, not all things happen just like that no. because of that very factor. Absolutely. And I mean, there are, there are times I know definitely in my life, if God had given me what I wanted when I wanted and I was believing for and my faith was oh. there for that thing, it could have destroyed me because mm -hmm. I wasn't prepared for it. Right. Because if your character is not there, you can receive a miracle from God and waste it. Not that God's wasted the miracle on you, you waste it. Or like you said... You might be believing for healing, but you might need to change your diet because mm -hmm. if you don't, you're going to go right back to the right same back thing. Right back to it. Right back to it. I think I shared this already, um, but I remember a time when you just, you know, I'm like, Lord, heal my heart. Heal my heart. I know you can heal it instantly. And, and going through the prayers and, you know, weeks go by, months go by, and I asked him one day, why don't you just do an instant working here, an instant miracle, an instant healing for me. And he said to me so clearly, because if you didn't go through the process, mm -hmm. you would end up right back there. Yep. There's something about Absolutely. pain that is a wonderful teacher. Yeah. You know, it's the persevering, it's the standing when you've done all to stand yeah. that says, wait a minute, I don't think I ever want to go back to that place. You know, last week we yeah. talked about that desperation how faith mm -hmm. gets to a point of desperation where you're just you just throw yourself at Jesus I'll do whatever it takes and maybe at another point you weren't willing to do whatever it takes yeah and I mean I shared a couple of weeks ago or a week ago like I said <laughs> weeks or but about how in my life I was under at one point a lot of depression and I prayed for God just to take it away 
and I'm glad he didn't. And people are like, why? And it's because I went through, like I said, I went to a Christian counselor and they taught me how to process through Mm. things in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Because believe it or not, we can unintentionally learn unhealthy habits all throughout life and not realize they're unhealthy. But now I know how to process through emotions in a healthy way and how to treat myself in a healthy way. And if God had just healed me, I could have very easily, like the devil could have come with one thought and I would have gone back to that same thing. And so God didn't work an instant miracle in that moment, but allowed me to grow. And faith is not denying what you're going through. A lot of people, you know, we've talked about how the, you know, if we just pretend like the devil doesn't exist, then he won't bother us in the same respect. They're like, well, if I just don't acknowledge this thing, it'll go away. Probably not. Mm -hmm. Just like you said when you were dealing with depression, well, I'll ignore it. I'll just pretend like it doesn't exist. And, you know, you try mind, mind, mind. No, we, and it's not that we are making uh, declarations that are hindering our faith walk, but we have to process life. We do not get to deny life. We process life, yeah. but we process it through the cross of Jesus Christ Absolutely. and what he has done for us and the faith that he has given us. You know, I want to bring up that faith should not be hard because Jesus gave us faith. The Bible says, let me think about the scripture for a minute. It says that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. In Romans 12, chapter, or chapter 12, verse 3, it says he has given to every man The measure of faith. It didn't say a measure like maybe you got a little bit more than me or I got a little bit more like here's the measurement. Okay, um, you know. No, he gave every man the measure of faith. And then not only that, he is the author and the perfecter of it. And then not only that, the very thing that he requires from us, faith, he gives us. Yeah, and God is amazing in that. When we are saved, he gives us everything we need for salvation, for our walk in Christianity. Sometimes people are like, then how come things come along later in life? How Mm. come they come along later in my faith? But if you think of it, it's like starting gardening. You get a fresh, huge plot of land, and you start growing like one crop. Well, you have a lot of room to grow other crops, and you might have all the seeds there, But it takes time to tend to certain things. It takes time to learn the skills to learn to grow spiritually. And eventually you do start planting other seeds that grow different Mm -hmm. fruit. And I mean, there's a reason that sowing and planting is so often used and it's fruit of the spirit. It's not something that just magically happens. And I mean, there's the parable of the talents for a reason. Mm -hmm. When the uh, servants that invested wisely, God honored them with more. Mm -hmm. And the one that didn't invest with anything, that didn't give anything, God said that they were wicked and they should have just at least thrown it in a bank because it would have got interest. Right. God gives us these gifts, these seeds, were to say, to invest, right. to plant, to grow what is inside of us. Because like you said, it's already been given to us, that right. measure of faith. We don't have, some person doesn't have more no. than the other. It's just how have they nurtured that? Yes. Well, we're supposed to steward our faith. Yes, absolutely. We're supposed to do something with it, just like you said about the parable of the talents. Let me read to you from uh, the book of Jude. Now, Jude is not chapter and verse. It's just verses. There's one chapter in Jude. And it says, Beloved, I, I, well, I was, let me read this again. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith. For the faith. He says, contend earnestly. He said salvation, which is now we're born again. But what is the faith? That is what causes our life to work in Christ, yes. that the seed of faith that has been given to us, contend for it. And then in verse 20, he says, but you, beloved, now he's talking to the church. He called him beloved. He said, you, beloved, building yourself up in your most holy faith. So we have some building to do. We have some contending to do for faith. Yeah. And I love in Hebrews 11 when it talks about, like, it's the hall of faith chapter, mm-hmm. and every single part of it starts by faith. Yes. So-and-so is able to do this by faith. So-and-so is mm-hmm. able to do this by faith. So-and-so. And eventually it's kind of like, I get it. By faith yeah, they were able to do it. it. By <laughs> faith they were able to do it. But no, by faith they were able to do it because it is by faith that we are able to do what God calls us yes. to. It is by faith that we are saved through grace. It is by faith that miracles mm-hmm. are done. And people are like, okay, we get it by faith. Yes, everything in our walk with God 
Faith is required. Yes, it is required. And Proverbs 24, verse 10 says, If you faint in the day of adversity, how small is your strength? Or I would say, how small is your faith? You have faith, but have you stewarded it? How much have you invested into your yeah. faith life? Because the just shall live by faith. So if you feel like your life is more in a defeat mode than in a victory mode, I would take a look at your faith, my faith, our faith. Take a look at faith and see what am I doing with this? What words am I speaking? Yeah. Cameron, talk about the words that we speak. Yeah, I absolutely, okay, one of my favorite passages of Scripture is when Jesus is talking about, like, we all know the verse where he's like, and you shall speak to your mountain, be removed and cast yes. into the sea, and it Mark shall 11. be done. Yes, and everyone always, like, says that parable really quickly, but if you pay attention, he says, and you shall speak to your mountain. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we often forget is that we're called to speak, too, because when Jesus ascended to heaven and the Great Commission happened in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, uh, starting actually with verse 18, it says, All authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. And then he says, Go therefore. And when he says that, he's transferring that authority. And we've right. mentioned this a couple times, but it's so crucial because when Jesus is on earth and we see him doing miracles, he is constantly speaking with authority. And for example, I am your employee. When you ask me to do something, you speak with authority and mm -hmm. I will do it because mm -hmm. I am your employee. So I understand that as an employer to employee standpoint, but we so often miss this when it right. comes to our faith. Yes. Jesus said, I am giving you authority. And it's kind of like a CEO giving a manager authority over employees. And he gives us this authority to go and speak right. to these things, that we will cast out demons, that we will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. He gives us authority. And by our very words, mm -hmm. we are able to speak to strongholds. Yes. We are able to speak to spiritual forces working against the kingdom of God. And also by our words, we're able to get things working for us. Yes. And I mean, James talks countless times about the power of our tongue. Yep. We know that life and death is in the power of the tongue. We know that our tongues are like a rudder on a ship. Whatever we say, it steers and guides us. And I think so often, too, I love the illustration of a rudder. And now I'm just going off because I'm, <laughs> no, I'm excited about words. They're important. But it is a rudder on a ship. And so often we think that we can just turn that ship on a dime. But a ship doesn't turn on mm. a dime. It has to make a huge turn before it can be corrected. Mm -hmm. And so often I know, it, even if I'm being honest with my own life, there are times where I might be acting a certain way, using my words a certain way, and I want to flip it around, and I'm upset that it doesn't flip around immediately. But our words have power, mm -hmm. and where we start directing our words is where we're going to go. Right. And the Bible says, can bitter and sweet water, yes. in other words, can bitter words and sweet words come out of the same fountain. Yeah. And I think we, um, we nullify what we are, uh, we nullify our faith with words that don't speak life. Yes. You said the scripture in our tongue, in our mouth, is the power of life and death. What are we speaking? You know, maybe here at church we make this grand declaration that we always make every Sunday. We acknowledge you together as our all-sufficient all God, God, our God, God of the, the more than, than enough. enough. The God, God of the, the full supply. supply. We thank you, Lord, for, for abundance, abundance both, both in, in our, our lives and in our church. And then two or three hours later, we go, I don't know what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough money for that. Did yeah. you know we just got a bill for this? And if we pay that, then we won't be able to pay this. And wait a minute. Didn't we just say we acknowledge you together as our all-sufficient all God? God? Shouldn't we be... Let that be the precipice for every other sentence that mm -hmm. proceeds about money. And if we pray together, say we lay hands on you or you ask us to join in faith with you about a healing or a miracle, and then the doctor calls you and says the count is, you know, the, the blood count is not real good right now. And you're, oh, I don't know. What are we, we going to do? Am I going to die? Wait a minute. Didn't we pray? Didn't we set the bar of expectation up here? And shouldn't we... Hold on up here. I yeah. remember there was a song back in the late 80s, I've got my hopes up high. And the world wants to say, don't get people's hopes up too high because yeah. what if it doesn't work? But Jesus says, get your hopes up high. And I think oftentimes people are like really worried about the side of like, well, I want to still honor truth. I don't want to like lie to people. And there's a difference. It's not that we're denying truth when we're speaking faith. We 
you can say, the doctors say this, but I believe. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. we're not trying to deny truth. We recognize and understand truth, but we're speaking not what the world is proclaiming as truth, but what God's truth what is. God's because truth God's is. truth supersedes what the world has to say. And sometimes the circumstances of the world might say, yes, you might have cancer. But God says he is healing, that he is mm -hmm. life, yes. that he will restore and make new. We know that that is God's truth. And so we are exalting God's truth above what the world has to Absolute. say is true. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So whatever Jesus said, you can take it to the bank. Whatever Jesus said, it's higher than any diagnosis, mm -hmm. any um, prognosis, any statement that you get in the mail. Yeah. Jesus is higher than that. And I've already mentioned this scripture um, in past sessions, but the Bible also says in the book of Psalm, he exalts his word yeah. even above his name. And the Bible said all th authority is given in his name. Authority mm -hmm. is in his name, but the word is higher than his name. What? Yeah. And I, I mean, and that's great to hear because there are so many scriptures that even talk about the power of our words, to talk about his healing life and the fact that he is exalting his word, what he has declared above even his name, knows that he is not afraid to put himself on stand, mm. to go before a court and say, <laughs> no, my word is true. I've exalted above my name. My word is good. And I mean, one of my favorite verses on words is that uh, a good man out of the good treasure of his right. heart brings forth good. An evil mm -hmm. man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And I love this because... One of the things we see with Jesus' faith and his words is that they were never contradictory of one another. Right. If never. he said it, it was done. Mm -hmm. And we're like, well, yeah, he was always speaking life, but he also spoke a curse. We saw him curse mm -hmm. the fig tree, right. and it dried up. Mm -hmm. We know that he spoke life, and life came. I mean, he speaks to a dead child and says, like, to come back to life, and they come back right. to life. His words were so in line, and I mean, if we took our words at that value. Right. And we did not speak a word unless it was going to yes. be life and know that it would be life and not speak a word of death unless we knew it was going to be mm -hmm. death. Like how much more would our faith be strengthened and our confidence be in the word of God? Right. Because that is what he has made us to be. Mm -hmm. and, and as you're saying that, I'm thinking about the scriptures. You know, when you read the book of Proverbs, you get wisdom for life. And, mm -hmm. it, and it says, stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to others. Don't lie. One of the things that the Lord hates is a lying tongue. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean just telling a blatant lie to somebody. It means don't lie to your own spirit. Yeah. Don't lie to your own mind. You know, I have this app. Um, it's called Better Me. And, you know, you log your exercise and you log how much you eat. And, and you can totally cheat on it. You can tell the app that you ate everything you should and that you drank all the water that you should. And it will congratulate you. But you know if it's true or not. <laughs> you just like plug in the extra numbers just to get the congratulations. Yeah. Like, but, and I think it's the same thing, though. With that app, you can plug in whatever you want and get that message. But the real results are going to show in life. Oh, brother. And we can tell people at church all the results we're plugging in. But it's going to eventually show in our actions and in our life. Right. Well, I'm believing for this. I'm, I'm saying this. I'm doing this. Okay, where's the fruit of it if you're really doing it? And people are like, hey, that's a little harsh, Cameron, right. but it's true. And I'm saying that for the same thing for me. And I mean, Jody calls me out all the time on my words towards myself because I still like will say a lot of self-deprivating things occasionally and she'll call me out and it's good because wow. you need people in your life that'll call you out on that <laughs> stuff because life, our words have power. There is life yes. or death in them. Power. You know, someone said to pastor recently, you know, I don't think I've ever heard an unkind word come out of your mouth or a criticism of another person. And wouldn't that be a phenomenal testimony for every one of us associated with Grace Life Church to have that witness? Because see, if our words are that precise, like a precision tool, nothing will be impossible to us. Mm-hmm. And I, I've been reading through the uh, Gospels again recently, and I think one of the things I love is that Jesus' words are so precise. Mm -hmm. They're so direct and aiming towards something. I was reading, for example, uh, the story of when the uh, Pharisees try to come to Jesus and try to trap him, and they're like, okay, who sh what do you say about paying taxes? Should we pay taxes mm. to the Romans, or should we give our money to God? Or And Jesus in that time, that was a very serious question yes. because they're under Roman occupation. There's a lot of oppression. To say that he has, you have to pay taxes to Caesar, mm. you're saying that they should be in oppression. 
But then to say that you're ignoring Caesar is to say you're going against the right. laws. Right. And so Jesus, at that time, that wasn't an easy question. We think it's an easy question mm-hmm. now because of what he said. But he so accurately dials in. He's like, give me the coin. Whose face is on it? Then render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. And he could have stopped there and it have been like, wow, that's a good point. Yep. But then he says, but render unto, unto God, God what is God's. And he speaks so directly. And God is always speaking so directly to our points and to what's going on in our lives. And it's never to be like an aha moment. I mean, it is for us like an aha, but it's not to like to be a gotcha from him. Mm-hmm. It's to strengthen us, to strengthen our faith, to give us a better position and standing to be able to grow. Yes. And I think of the scripture that says, if you would love life and see good days, the continuation of that scripture is all about words. Then speak well of other people. Speak words of kindness. You know, it's, it's all, so much of the word is about our words. Yes. And he's made it easy because he's given us the word to speak. Yes. We don't have to guess what to say. And we are here to help you. If you say, but I don't know what to say. Hey, reach out to us. We can help you with that. That's what church is for, is for us to help each other. Absolutely. You've got friends who know things that you don't know. And they, you know things that they don't know. So reach out to your friends. Get together in community and, and talk about the word and make commitments yeah. to speak words of life. Yeah. And people often ask me, they're like, why do you know all the random things you know? And the reason why <laughs> is like you said, we all have friends that don't know what we know or they know what we don't know. Uh-huh. And so I am one of those people, if I have a question, I'm not embarrassed to be like, hey, I have a question. Right. Like, because I'm going to grow out of that And I have learned so much about the word, from example, from you and pastor, or from my own parents, or from other pastors I've sat Mm -hmm. under, like in Hawaii, or my journey through NAVS, because I've sat under people that know. And so it is worth it to reach out to people. And you, you're like a wordsmith. He's on his computer, uh, home screen, just words going by all the time. And what a great way to build yourself up, even with the word of God, is having it before your eyes all the time on postcards, Mm -hmm. on post-it notes, in any way that you can. Get the word in you so that the word will come out of you and will stop up that bitter spring. We'll stop those bitter words that come along and destroy the seed that you planted and then you're wondering what in the world happened. Yeah. So I guess we've got to wrap it up. Yeah. We, you know, we're getting these signals like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was starting to notice that as well. So we have band practice in just a few minutes. Yes, we so do. we do have to wrap it up. But um, we, we want to join our faith with your faith yes. and your faith with ours. The same way that you have needs, we have needs. And, and if we could, it would be like grabbing hands across the internet, the med- you know, yeah. through social media and saying, I'm, lo- I'm hooked to you. I'm linked up with you in faith. And so please, like we said a few minutes ago, reach out to us. Let us know how to agree with you. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. Yes. Amen? Yeah, and what's that verse uh, attended on um, the where two or three believe oh, touching? Or, yes, as touching anything, yes. they shall have whatsoever they ask the Father in Absolutely. heaven. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's agree together. Let's be in faith together. And we're excited to see you for another week next Wednesday. Yes. Bye. Bye.